What's going on you guys? My name's Ty Knotts and welcome to Top 5 Unknowns, 5 Mysteries Solved with Science. Number 5 in between Mars and Jupiter, there lives a dwarf planet known as Ceres. The planet is known to have existed for a number of years, though the first images were captured of the planet back in 2015. The photos were captured by a NASA space probe, and the photos appear to depict a grey, moon-like planet that was emitting a very large light from a large crater that could be seen on the planet's surface. For quite some time, scientists and ufologists alike believe that this may have been a sign of some sort of intelligent life, though the truth is far less interesting. As it would turn out, the lights were actually just a reflection of the sun that was being refracted from a large salt formation. The glowing blue effect takes place because the salt is far more reflective than the other objects surrounding it. Though the discovery wasn't a total loss, the fact that the salt formation of this size even exists on this planet has led scientists to believe that at one time there were likely oceans, meaning that the possibility of life is still reasonable. Though for now we have no way of visiting or really examining the planet and likely won't for the foreseeable future. Number 4 Back in 1997, a group of marine biologists captured an extremely strange sound that came from the ocean. The sound was detected by a series of underwater microphones that had been placed some 3,000 miles apart, meaning that whatever object or creature was emitting this sound had to have been unimaginably massive. The sound was soon referred to as the bloop, and left scientists and investigators stumped for quite some time, though the bloop was ultimately explained as just being a large chunk of ice. It's believed that the noise was detected after a huge chunk of ice fell off of a cap and plopped into the ocean. While that may not sound too terribly interesting, remember that this bloop was detected for a radius of 3,000 miles, meaning that the sound this ice block made, as well as the impact the block had, were literally earth-shaking, the likes of which had never been documented before and have never been documented again since. Number 3 by now, I'm sure the majority of you guys have heard of the Yanni Laurel debate. Though if you haven't, we'll play a clip for you in a moment. Basically, when you hear this clip, you'll either hear the phrase Yanni or Laurel. Though some individuals with very well-tuned ears can hear both phrases at the same time. This clip was making the rounds online for quite some time now, but only really went viral Laurel. recently. Laurel. 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 Laurel, 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 Laurel. Essentially, what is happening is that our ears are trained to hear certain frequencies while filtering out others. Some people's ears and ear shapes are more geared toward bassy, deep sounds, whereas others are tuned toward treble or higher frequencies. In this specific situation, the words Yanni and Laurel are overlaid with each other. There's some debate about how the recording actually came to be, but for the sake of simplicity, let's just say that the two words are perfectly aligned. The word Yanni is most commonly heard by those who have ears that are sensitive to treble frequencies, as the syllables required to articulate Yanni are all above the 1000 kHz frequency. For Laurel, on the other hand, most of the frequencies take place below 1000 kHz, meaning that people with bass tuned ears hear Laurel much more easily. Again, this is just a really basic explanation of the phenomenon and it gets a lot more complicated than this. So if you're interested in hearing more, Vox released a really great article explaining in detail what's going on here. So check that out if you have the time. Number 2. Marfa, Texas has long been a popular tourist destination for many UFO researchers and hobbyists, looking to catch a glimpse of one of the most highly recognized UFO hotspots in America. The town has earned its notoriety after a series of strange dancing lights that have been witnessed in the area for the better part of a century, with many people believing them to have been alien in origin. The truth behind these lights has only been partially explained, with a series of college students documenting the lights for over a four-day period. 
After the research I concluded, the college students alleged that the lights were actually the result of car headlights that were passing by in the distance, as there was a major highway fairly close to the popular gazing location. However, if you take a look at a video of the lights, you can really see that this is very likely not the case. Most of the lights seen in the video appear to be stationary or moving extremely slowly, whereas cars would obviously be moving much more quickly and would likely never stand still. Take a look at a clip from the lights and let us know what you think they may be. Folks, here we are, not much more than a mile and a half from the motel, heading out to the viewing stand, and we found out we didn't need to go to the viewing stand. That the Marfa lights are out, it's about, Pete, what is it, 7.30 in the morning? 7.00. Seven. And, and we're, we're not even, uh, we're probably seven miles from the viewing stand, so uh, it's just been a real good uh, Marfa lights trip. We spent a lot of time chasing around last night. Number 1 In countless parts of the world, most notably California and China, large sand dunes have been recorded making long, deep groaning sounds for centuries. In fact, when Marco Polo first discovered the sounds in China, he claimed that the desert was haunted. Over the years, many tribes have laid claim to the idea that the dunes may in fact be alive, some even going as far as saying that the sounds are God's way of attempting to communicate with his people. Though, as expected, the truth is far less interesting. The sounds are actually the result of tiny grains of sand rolling down the dune's incline. A single grain of sand makes an almost inaudible amount of sound. Though when you factor in that tens of thousands of grains of sand roll down these dunes at any given time, it's pretty easy to understand that the sound would be amplified considerably, resulting in that deep growling noise that so many people have heard. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you liked this video, be sure to click that like button. Also, don't forget to subscribe and click that notification bell to keep updated with our videos. 